السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم اسٹوڈنٹس فار دا بایو سیشن کنٹرول اینڈ کوارڈینیشن سو ناؤ بیفور وی پروسیڈ وتھ دا ٹاپک لیٹس فرسٹ ہیو دا بیسک انفارمیشن ہاؤ ٹو گیٹ ان ٹو دا ٹاپک سو ایز وی ہیڈ لرنڈ ان دا پریویس سیشن وی نو دیٹ دا سیلز اور دا بلڈنگ بلاکس سو ایوری بلاک which is responsible for this entire building is the structural and functional unit so now if we see the plant cell or an animal cell we can say that a cell which is similar in structure they group together to form what we call as tissues right now this group of tissues with a similar structure and function together they form what we call as organ now this many different types of organs in a body they together form an organ system and that makes up the body of a plant or an animal so this i had explained with respect to animal cell similarly in terms of plant cell we can see that each cell which is of similar shape and size they get together to form a structure what we call as tissues this in turn will give you an organ organ later develops into an organ system which forms a body of a plant now let's know in the human as we are more complex since we have been made up of different types of cells 200 different types of cells in that how the cells are arranged we said that the, the trillions of cells that make our body are not just scattered they have been grouped to form different organs so if you are going to look at this human body we see different organs all these are the organs and all the organs within a body will form an organ system they together function in a proper coordinated way so they work as a team to perform the individual functions for the overall activity of the body if any of the organ is not working imagine what would be the life for example if i say the kidneys are not functioning then what will happen to the body since kidney is not working the waste that is being generated in your body cannot be thrown out of the body therefore if any one organ is failing to function this entire body will not work efficiently the person may suffer from some sort of deficiency or diseases so we need to see that each and every organ is taken care properly hence the body can perform well now let's come to the specific system so this is what we call as nervous system now what's happening here in the nervous system as we have seen same types of cells they get together to form a tissue here we have taken a single nerve cell which we also term as neuron so many such neurons they get together to form a network which we call as nervous tissue and this tissue is going to form an organ which is that organ brain right now this organ within an organ system is going to take care of all the activities of the cell like conducting impulses and uh, helping in movement and taking decision and all those things will be taken care by this nervous system this is how a definite system is going to work in a coordinated way to accomplish the task of a particular body or an organism now let's now see how we can classify the system nervous system now in humans we can say that this nervous system is most complex and what it is comprising of it has the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system if you are going to divide that further we see that the main central nervous system is comprising of the important component of your body which helps in taking decision is the brain and smile card so now let's move on to peripheral nervous system here again it's been divided based upon what function each and every neuron does in this case it is divided 
into motor neurons and sensory neurons. So no motor neurons means those involved with movement. Okay, now sensory neurons, it can sense any stimuli like if someone is pinching you, that sensation will be transferred in the form of impulses. Now this motor neuron, if we further classify, it can be classified as autonomous or autonomic nervous system and somatic nervous system. Now there are certain actions in your body, like just imagine what would happen if you don't breathe, if you forget to breathe, during sleeping, if you forget to breathe, what may happen? But, so these sort of actions like breathing, heartbeat, it is not under uh, control. We cannot control them and say, yes, I want to breathe now, breathe in. I don't want to breathe now, stop breathing. So that sort of action is not there under our control. Therefore, the body is still alive because some sort of actions are not under our control. We call them as involuntary. The other one, a voluntary. If I, I want to walk, I will walk. Otherwise, I just prefer sitting in a place. This, whatever things you do, you do at your will. This sort of actions, what we call as voluntary actions. Now, let's see the important components of brain. Now, brain is the main component of central nervous system. Now, how your brain looks? Have you touched or feel the brain? You must have taken any animal brain. You must have seen it, right? It is just having the structure of a walnut. And how it appears? It is very delicate, fine, delicate. How much do you think it will? It may weigh. It may weigh around 1.5 kilograms. Now, where the brain is present in your body, the brain is a, such a delicate organ, so it has to be protected. So, a nature has designed a way wherein brain can be placed in a hard structure which will help in protecting this. So, the skull is the region where brain is cushioned with the fluid which is present inside that skull. It is cerebrospinal fluid. In that fluid, brain is placed and it has been protected safely. Now, there are different parts of the brain which will help you do different things. Imagine if you want to remember something or if you have a friend which you have met years back, when she is coming in front of you, you may not recognize immediately, but there is that sensation in you. Yes, I've seen her somewhere. I know her, I'm not able to get it. All these feelings you get because your brain is trying to recollect things. If you have seen already something, you try to compare and recollect it. The brain is such a part of an organism which clearly distinguishes we humans from other animals. What is that process? It is the thinking, the memory process, the thinking process, the ability to reason and take decision makes us apart from other animals. Now, there are certain other things also, if you're using your right hand, if you're using your left hand, which part of your brain is going to work? You know, there is something called as right-handedness. I mean, if your right hand, your left side of the brain works, and if you're left-handed, the right side of the brain works. So you can just have a look if you are intelligent, if you have, you have intellectual skills, which part of the brain is going to show you? If you are creative enough, what is which part of the brain is going to show that? Whether you are creative or not, some logical reasoning, depending upon which part of your brain is being used, you will have certain characteristics. Now, now let's classify the different parts of the brain. Now, if you look at the brain, it can be classified as the cerebral, which is the largest part of the brain. Then the second is cerebellum, which is very small compared to cerebral part. Then you have the la third part, which we call as medulla oblongata. These three different sections together, they coordinate with each other to accomplish tasks. For example, the cerebral part, which is having lots of folding, more the number of folding, and that also indicates that person is intellect. 
Similarly, you have certain sensory things like how what you see, what you feel, all those things are controlled by this. Now, involuntary actions are controlled by other part. Now, the coordination, like if you want to walk, your brain sends the signal. If this is sent in cerebral part, but the coordination, how to move and how to balance it's been because of cerebellum. Now, you can take an example. If a person is drunk, alcoholic, if you have imagine how the way he walks, he may not have balance because the cerebellum part which is responsible for the balancing act is being damaged because of excess of alcohol. So this is mainly concerned with the balancing act. This medulla oblongata, furnace, midbrain, all they form the other part of the brain. Now the next important component, you see, it is originating from the brain, then it continues. So when you just take your hand and try to feel your back you see that there is a bone backbone and that is made up of vertebral columns so inside those vertebral column this there is this thread like structure which passes from the brain up till the last vertebral column that is the spinal cord now let's review what we have learned till now how an cell will lead to the formation of organ system in plants and what is the organ system in animals, how we can classify nervous system, what are the different components of brain and spinal cord, what are the certain functions of those. I hope you have understood. If any doubts, you can re-watch the video. And there is, uh, there is uh, one uh, thing that you can do is you can compare the different parts of the brain and find out certain activities like you are riding a bicycle, if you are tasting something, if you are trying to remember something, which part of the brain is involved and how those actions will help. Okay, you can make a comparison of different parts of the brain and how the brain is going to act in each sense, whether those things are voluntary or involuntary. Think about all those things and try to make a mind map of those things. Thank you. Hope you have understood.